All the sheep pass under the rod. But the He said that's what comforts. That's what brings comfort. My shepherd knows those are in disagreement. He can also use the staff. He can also use the staff to beat the wolf. And he anoints our head with oil. And our tongue will And what he's saying. When I sit at the table, with problems he says he's going to anoint me with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of your faith. And what's he going to do? He said, when you do that, I'm going to give you a fresh anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And receive the new anointing. Yeah. He says, surely goodness and loving kindness. Follow me all the days of my life. And I'll be able to and eat of his provision and receive his rest. Receive his comfort. Receive all that he has. And especially receive a fresh anointing. We all know this. Yes, it's a Yes, Asubiza intege mu bugingo bwanjye anyobora inzira yo gukiranuka ku bwizina rye naho nanyura mu gikombe cy'igicucu cy'urupfu sinzatinya ikibi cyose kuko ndi kumwe nawe ishimbo yawe inkoni yawe nibyo bimpumuriza ndunganiriza meza mu maso yabanzi banje nsize amavuta mu mutwe Gikombe cyanjye kirasesekara nukuri kugirirwa neza n'imbabazi bizanyumaho imisi yose nkiriho nange nzaba mu nzu y'uwiteka iteka ryose and i always appreciated what it said akali kunda magambo ayimo avugwa it's only recently that I have begun to understand 
a much deeper understanding. This is the wonderful thing about the Word of God. No matter how many times you read it, you can go back to it and learn deeper things. It's absolutely amazing. When God gives you a revelation of something you thought you knew all along. And so when he gives you deeper understanding, it is a joy. The word of God is wonderful. It speaks to us. It speaks to our spirit. So don't make the mistake of saying, well, I've read that before. And just going right over it. Sometimes we have to let one scripture talk about another scripture. Or it all goes together. So let's see what Psalm 23 has recently revealed to me. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And we're talking about relationships. The shepherd has relationship with the sheep. And we'll talk about that more. So he's saying, because the Lord is my shepherd, I do not want I'm not going to be in want. And he tells us why. The shepherd makes me to lie down. That's rest. The shepherd gives rest to his sheep. Our shepherd, our great shepherd, Jesus gives us rest. Next, he leads me beside quiet waters. The reason that's important is that sheep do not drink from troubled waters. Sheep will only drink from quiet waters. And he's saying, God knows how to lead me. To a quiet place where I can drink. So we have pasture and we have water. We have food and drink. And we have those in a place of rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice, he says in the next verse. Uh, a very pivotal verse in this song. Uh, he restores my soul. <laughs> what is the soul? It's our mind. It's our will. Where we make decisions. I am going to do that. I'm not going to do that. That's our will. Making decisions. And then emotions. And emotions are things like anger. And joy. There's, there's so many emotions. So he's saying our soul mind, will, emotions. It's saying it needs restored. A restoration is taking us back to a place we were before. 
If you're living in peace and something disturbs your peace and you have a new trouble then your soul gets troubled. Your mind gets troubled. Your mind keeps thinking about it. I'm sure you've had this experience. Somebody offends you and your mind starts thinking what you would like to say to them and your emotions get involved and you start feeling angry and so where you were at peace now you're disturbed you might even be ready to fight because you're so upset I've had occasion when I go to bed very disturbed by something that's going on in my life or my family or in the church my mind just keeps thinking and he's saying the Lord is the one who restores me when I'm disturbed, he brings me back to a place of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He guides me in paths of righteousness. The shepherd guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So when we're disturbed, he, as the great shepherd, will guide us to bring us back to this place of right relationships. For when we've had disagreement and we've had conflict, we're, we're not living in righteousness which is right relationship that happens in marriage that happens with children that happens with people in the church we get in conflict and we're not living in right relationship sometimes we don't want to see him or we don't want to talk to him have you ever been out in the community and see somebody that you really are not in right relationship you don't want to talk to them you may hope they don't see you <laughs> you're not in right relationship <laughs> He said he restores us and brings us in right relationship. Why does he do it? For his name's sake. Amen. 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 We're children. And sometimes we act like children. But we belong to each other as a family. You are my sister. You are my brother. We belong to each other. And when we don't agree with each other and get in conflict with each other, the Lord is working to bring us back in a right relationship. Some family members get offended with each other and don't talk to each other for many years. That's not the way we should live with each other. And because we're followers of Christ and we're a part of his family he's always working to get us back in right relations how does he do that well he may prompt you 
ashora kubi kura muto abishora kushira mumuti mawawe to go talk to them. Akapogira tuwa mumu kufuga kwenye mufuki. And you will say, na ukafuga. I don't want to talk. Uh uh. Baba ni sisi shaka kumufuki shano na handa. And so you have a wrestle. Ah, ukatani ukakwa. You have a wrestle with God. Ukatani ukakwa na nima. I don't want to do that. Na mana baba ni sisi shaka kumu. But he will deal with you. We call it conviction. Oh, the Lord is dealing with me. I must go talk to I must get things right. And that's when you, by your will, you say, Okay, Lord, I'll do that. But I don't know how to do that. And that's when you ask him, how do I do this? How do I talk to them? What do I say to them? Or what do I do for them? Years ago, I was pastoring in Texas, USA. And I was on the staff of the church. And one of the pastors on the staff decided he wanted to be the senior pastor. So he was gathering people in the church to support him to take over the church. And I had known him for many years. I have known him for many years. And I had a relationship with him. And I said to him, this is not right. We should not be doing this. He wanted me to support him. And I said, I cannot support him. It's God who puts something in the And it's God who would take him out. And he got people in the church behind him. And when he did this, lots of tension. No, no, in the It was bad. And so I resigned. I left the church. And when I left, he was very unhappy with me. We had a broken relationship. After many years of working together in ministry. So I was unhappy with him. And he was unhappy with me. And we were not talking. And so one morning when I was praying, the Holy Spirit brought this to mind. It wasn't much later. And as I was praying, I realized the Holy Spirit wanted me to do something to try to restore our relationship. And as I was praying, I was, I just had a prompting in my mind. He is a man who heats his home with wood. Yeah, he heats it. He has a fireplace in his home. And he, like, and he likes to put wood on there to make it nice and warm. And so the Lord gave me direction to do this. To go to the wood and chop the wood. And I chopped a lot of wood. I chopped enough wood to go from here up to here. Up to here. I worked very hard. 
And so I waited. Until I knew he would be gone at another appointment. And I pulled up with the wood. And I carried it around his house. And I put it on his back porch. And when I left. So say, I said, thank you, Lord. You just showed me what to do. <laughs> to express love. And try to restore my relationship. My heart was now free. And just to let you know the rest of the story. In time. He was restored to me. Now we are Garuka. And I to him. Now we Nazitra Garuka to Ramira to the Savan. But I had to take the first step. I put him on the Annie Major Pontio Pompa Fatigami. Now I'm not boasting in myself. Now for my people of Zinira. But I do want you to understand this. Nasha Kango Muzu. It's the mature one. A Umdukus who will take the first step. Newe Uzu Shakabus who came with Kibas. Hallelujah. Amen. And you may say, why me? I think sometimes the Lord comes to us because He trusts us. He says to you, I know you do the right thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we were looking at verse 3 where it says righteousness. We've been talking about right relationships. How important it is to have the right relationship in the church. We all know this. I think Pastor Jack talked about Psalms 33. Yeah. When we dwell in unity, that's the place of commandment. God looks at us and he sees us in right relationship in unity. And he says, I command the blessing. And he pours out blessing on us. There'll be a freedom in our church. A freedom to worship. When people are fighting each other. And their broken relationships. The presence of the Lord is not there. <laughs> he comes in his presence when we're in unity, not in division. Hallelujah. Amen. Next he says, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. The shadow of death is not actually death. Instead, what it is, something that looks like. It's going to bring death. And if he says, I won't fear because you're with me. Years ago, I was with one of my grandfathers. And he had a farm. I was a very young man. And as we were working out behind the barn, we heard a noise at the house. It sounded like a door slam. And he said, did you hear that? I said, yes, Grandpa, I heard that. 
He charged through that house. And he opened the doors. And then nobody's there. He closed the door. And he go to the next room. And he opened the door. And look in the closet. And then closed the door. He went through the entire house. He went upstairs. And then downstairs. He went everywhere. Now I'm with him. I'm a little boy. And you can imagine. I was afraid. Because if somebody's there, what if they have a weapon? What if they are big? It could bring harm to them. But my grandfather was not afraid. And so I'm a young boy. <laughs> you understand, right? I'm hiding behind grandpa. That illustrates this. You're with me. I was with him. He's there. And it's a good thing to say, Lord, I'm feeling afraid right now. But you said you're with me. And so I'm going to trust you. And that you will protect me. And we all know what it means to be comforted. The Holy Spirit comforts us in those moments when we're disturbed. He brings a, he brings a peace to us. And he says, my shepherd, my Lord, he comforts me. Now how does he comfort us? He said, the rod and the staff. So I was curious, how is it the rod comforts you? I only think of a rod as something to discipline. If I have a rod, I can use that rod. I use that to discipline. I use it to strike. But she she come under the rod of the shepherd. I knew I was going here. I that But we understand. All the sheep pass under the rod. At night, when they're going into the shelter. Now that's a rock. So the sheep pass under the rock. And the shepherd counts them. When they go into the shelter at night. Now, 
He knows each one. As and he counts them. As he holds the rod right above them, I'll do it one more time. Hallelujah. He, he, he probably names the sheep. And he says, as the sheep passes under Willie, the shepherd says, there goes Willie. Hallelujah. <laughs> Each one of us. There are so many of us. But he knows each He said that's what comforts. That's what brings comfort. My shepherd knows me. He's aware of me. And when the sheep passes under the rock, he's also looking to see the condition of the sheep. Is the sheep okay? Is the sheep okay? Is the sheep okay? Is the sheep okay? Is it well? Does he need any of my attention? He comforts us with his rod and his staff. What does he do with his staff? Well, it has a crook on it, as you know. And so, sometimes he needs to draw us close to him. And he can use that stuff to separate us from those, those who are in disagreement. <laughs> He can also use the staff. He can also use the staff to beat the wolf. Yeah. Hallelujah. To prepare a table before me and the presence of my enemies. Through anointing my heart with oil. Okay. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Before me in the presence of my enemies. And then he began to show me what he's talking about is very significant. We've already heard what he does. As our shepherd, he brings us to rest. He brings us to comfort. He knows us. And he protects us. So this is the next thing he does. When you have a table, what do you do with the table? You put food on the table. <laughs> and you set. And you eat. At the table. But he says, you're going to eat in the presence of your enemies. Now who's my enemy? My enemy is all this fear. The enemy is all this doubt. We're going to get disturbed. And he's saying, when you get disturbed, 
When you are uncomfortable, because what's happening in your life, when you're tempted to be fearful, and you have all these doubts and worries, sometimes we have many worries in one day. When you lead the church, you may have somebody come to you in, in the morning and say, Do you know what they're saying about you? No, what are they saying? And they give you a bad But that's only in the morning. Because in the afternoon, you might have Somebody calls and says, Oh, they had to go to the hospital. And it's a serious problem. And you must go to the hospital. And you go, Oh, no. Now I have another problem. Somebody else has a and then in the evening, you go home to the family, and one of your children has been disobedient, and you have to deal with that. So I get a new problem in the morning, and I get a new problem in the afternoon, and I get a new problem in the afternoon. <laughs> Did you ever have one of those days? Let me suggest, take away your peace. The problems of life, the problems of leading, the problems of living in right relationships. These things are enemies to our soul. And we get disturbed. And what he's saying is, right here in this chair is my latest problem. And here's in this chair, that's yesterday's problem. And it still isn't solved. I've got, actually, I've got more chairs at the table. Sometimes, I'd be happy to just have two problems. To have two chairs. But the truth is, I can have six chairs at the table. Oh, yeah. And so I've got these. I've got these chairs of problems in my church. And he says, I prepared a table in the presence of your church. Now, how does he, how does he bring peace? Notice it. He says in the next sentence, Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. So, what he's saying is, when you're sitting at that table with all your problems, you must look to the presence of God. Keep your eye on the The temptation is to look at your problems and try to think through your problems. How am I going to deal with this? What am I going to do about it? He said, don't do that. Do it. Instead, look at the presence of the Lord. Keep your eyes straight. Fixing your eye on Jesus. The author and perfecter of your faith. Amen. Amen.
These problems in the church, these problems in the marriage, these problems in the family, these problems that just keep coming out. I say to you, sit at the table that God has prepared for you and eat of his provision and receive his rest receive his comfort receive all that he has and especially receive a fresh anointing
yo guhanga nibibazo amafuta yo kumva amafuta amafuta dusubiza mutege ufishwe dozi shimiriza muri ya 2023 usengerane dusabe imana kwa amafuta amafuta tukutumbire ufite ibibazo byinshi z'ubukene hari ibibazo byinshi z'uburwayi hari ibibazo byinshi z'amagambo hari ibibazo byinshi zo kubaza ejo hazaza uko bizagenda reka twese dusenge urukundo rutugote kandi rutahije barukoba umarukoba umare gushidikanya mu kwizera reka dusenge bizina rya Yesu haleluya usenge usenge rya imana Yeah. 